Episode 3 of House of the Dragon Season 2 has been released by HBO and we get the build up for the war between Team Black and Green. The Game of Thrones prequel show has been building on this for weeks and after each side making a move in the previous episodes, Rhaenyra finds out this week if any peace can be made this late on. The answer doesn't seem good and what we got was some great table setting for what's in store. So in this explained analysis, I'm going to be giving you my breakdown and review of House of the Dragon Season 2 Episode 3, discussing plot details and that ending. There will be spoilers in this video, so if you haven't watched the episode yet, then I would recommend checking it out before watching my analysis. Before I get into it though, if you want to see more on House of the Dragon and the Game of Thrones spin-off shows, then don't forget to support this upload by giving it a like rating and subscribing to the channel. But without further ado, let's dive into my explained video for House of the Dragon Season 2 Episode 3. So the latest episode of House of the Dragon has made it crystal clear that war is on the horizon and the two powerful women at the centre of the conflict are unable to find common ground. Despite the efforts of a few well-meaning individuals, the impending bloodshed fueled by revenge seems inevitable. Rhaenyra's attempts to reconcile with her former friend Alicent falls flat, setting the stage for a devastating war in a dance of dragons. And as we gear up for an upcoming battle in episode 4, a fleeting chance for peace only serves to strengthen the resolve of the warring queens. So how did we get to this and what were all the highlights of this week's latest episode? Well, starting with the opening scene, this week's episode kicks off with a feud between House Bracken and House Blackwood, two rival houses with a long-standing grudge. Tensions escalate when the Brackens pledge allegiance to Aegon, while the Blackwoods support Rhaenyra. A seemingly trivial dispute over boundary stones erupts into a brutal battle known as Burning Mill, and it results in heavy casualties on both sides. It truly puts the context of war firmly in our minds, and once we get to the ending of episode 3, it becomes a somewhat powerful reminder of what could take place between two sides who are at a boiling point. In the meantime, at King's Landing, word of the battle spreads to the small council. Aegon wastes no time in declaring it a triumph for their cause and demands to be informed of their army's next course of action. Amidst the chaos and shouting, Alison steps in to restore order until Sir Criston Cole arrives. The newly appointed Hand of the King, who is widely despised, announces that the Riverlands hold the key to the war and Harrenhal is the key to the Riverlands. He plans to ride out and seize the stronghold of House Strong and despite Alicent's attempts to object, her concerns are largely disregarded. As Cole prepares to depart, Alicent seizes a moment to introduce him to her brother Gwaine, who will be accompanying the soldiers on their journey to Harrenhal. Despite the cool atmosphere between them, she reluctantly offers him a blessing. However, when he requests her favour, she begins to soften up, eventually handing him a handkerchief from her bodice. And so their journey begins, and as we know from later on, a member of Team Black has already considered this same move. But before I come to that, there are a few more scenes that take place at King's Landing. Inside the castle, King Aegon expresses his desire to ride Sunfire and assist Cole in taking Harrenhal. However, Laris Strong steps in and convinces him otherwise by revealing rumours of a plot to manipulate him into going into war. Aegon, feeling uneasy about the gossip, instructs Varys to address the spreading lies and appoints him as his Master of Whisperers. So Laris has orchestrated more in the lead up to this moment and this is clear when Aegon makes him his Master of Whisperers and decides not to fly into battle. Instead, the King and his Kingsguard companions decide to visit a tavern in King's Landing. They happen to overhear a man at a nearby table claiming to be Daemon and Viserys' illegitimate brother. After getting very drunk, they head to a brothel with the hope of finding a young squire to bed for the first time. The king searches through the pleasure house, pulling back curtains in search of the lady he wants the squire to meet. But eventually, he discovers Aemond, completely nude, and cuddling with the madam who comforted him in episode 2, proceeding to make fun of him for doing so. 
Moving on, in the journey towards Harrenhal, Kristen Cole grows increasingly frustrated to discover that Gwen and his companions intend to spend the night at a tavern rather than be with the rest of the soldiers. Tempers flare as they debate this decision until suddenly the clouds part above them. So Kristen realises that they are completely exposed from above and with that, Bela swoops down on her dragon. They just make it to cover in time and when she can't see them among the trees after a few passes, she leaves, leaving Gwen expressing his gratitude to Kristen for saving their lives. Someone else who's getting around by dragon and making moves is Damon, who's flying Vagar to Harrenhal. He arrives at a crumbling castle, where he strolls down the corridors with his sword at the ready. After encountering and defeating a lone guard, he enters the chamber illuminated by candles and occupied by a few men. Damon boldly proclaims his claim to Harrenhal, prompting an older man, Simon Strong, to kneel and swear allegiance to Rhaenyra. Simon extends an invitation for dinner, but Damon declines, wary of potential poisoning due to Laris Strong's betrayal of Aegon. But Simon, Laris's great uncle, denounces Laris as a traitor to their family, hinting at his involvement in the deaths of his own kin. They go on to discuss plans to restore Harrenhal and establish it as a military outpost for Damon's forces. And despite the long-standing feud between the Blackwoods and Brackens, Damon remains resolute in his mission. He believes that the presence of the crown and a dragon will compel the locals to cooperate and unite for a common cause. Later on that night, Damon settles down for bed and has a very unsettling experience. His door shakes and he experiences a terrifying nightmare in which he wanders through the corridors and ends up in a room where a young Rhaenyra, portrayed by a returning Millie Alcock, is tidying up Jaehaerys body by sewing his neck. A startled Damon drops his weapon and suddenly finds himself outside next to a tree. It's here that Alice Rivers, whom we briefly glimpsed when Damon arrived at the castle, is standing nearby and she warns him, you will die in this place, leaving Damon to panic. So episode 3 introduces us to the character of Alice, who is one of the more mystical characters in this universe. She doesn't practice witchcraft in the traditional sense, but she dabbles in potions and unusual medicines, so it's possible that she has visions similar to Helena or Melisandre from Game of Thrones. Harrenhal is known for its mystical properties, adding to her enigmatic nature. So it's unclear what she's truly capable of, but her ability to show Damon visions may be linked to a potion he consumed. Alice Rivers seems to have a premonition about Damon's fate, which could explain her interest in him. And she also has a big connection to Aemond in the Fire and Blood book, so without giving too much away, just know that there's more to come from this character. But while we just got an interesting scene featuring a younger Rhaenyra, it was only a matter of time before we catch up with present day Rhaenyra over at Dragonstone. Following the burial of the Cargyle twins, Rhaenyra and Rhaenys discuss the escalating tensions between the men on both sides gearing up for war. Despite Rhaenys suggesting that Alicent might be the key to peace, Rhaenyra firmly rejects the notion. Subsequently, Rhaenyra attends to some household matters, striking a deal with Myseria for a place at court in exchange for information on the Red Keep. She also sends away her stepdaughter Raina, two baby dragons, and some dragon eggs to ensure their safety and longevity of their house if anything bad does happen to them. And naturally, her stepdaughter is displeased with this decision. Rhaenyra then joins a Black Council meeting where the men update her on the Battle of the Burning Mill and urge her to find a hiding place as well. They push for her to take action in the war and express impatience with her cautious approach, although Rhaenys does support her. She eventually seeks advice from Maseria on how to approach Alicent face to face without warning and without causing a scene. And in a surprising turn of events, Rhaenyra, disguised as a scepter, boards a boat to King's Landing and heads towards the sept to talk to Alicent. This brings us to the end of the episode and to the conversation between them, which seems to be the last straw when it comes to stopping their civil war. Rhaenyra's bodyguard waits outside as she sneaks in, blending in with a group of similarly robed sisters. 
she approaches Alicent, who is praying alone, and pulls out a knife to stop her from crying out. They settle down, and Rhaenyra reminds her of the day they watched Attorney together when her brother was born. She tries to convince Alicent that they can both prevent the worst from happening, knowing that Alicent also doesn't desire bloodshed. But despite Rhaenyra's efforts, Alicent refuses to agree to any terms. Still, there is some kind of forgiveness made, as when Rhaenyra denies responsibility for Jaehaerys' death, Alicent expresses her hatred for Aemon killing Lucerys. The conversation remains tense throughout, with Rhaenyra questioning Viserys' decision to change his mind about her succession. And this is when Alicent reveals that he spoke of Aegon being the prince that was promised to unite the realm. This revelation shocks Rhaenyra, who realises that he was talking about A Song of Ice and Fire, the story her father told about Aegon the Conqueror. She tries to convince Alicent of this, and despite brief understanding, Alicent urges Rhaenyra to leave before she's discovered, showing her lack of faith in stopping this war. Rhaenyra pleads with Alicent to admit she misunderstood her dying husband, but the Queen remains steadfast, signalling that it's too late to prevent the impending war. So overall, Episode 3 was another successful build-up instalment to what we appear to be getting with Episode 4, known as the Dance of Dragons. As the second season of the show progresses, the contenders in the Targaryen Civil War are still searching for evidence that the conflict is truly underway. And with those developments, I think it's an episode that has both some great things and some things that could have been altered. To start with the negative, there were some silly things that happened in this episode that logistically I wasn't too keen of. For instance, the fast travel of Rhaenyra at the end, or the fact that once again, someone had infiltrated a major house base. In the first episode, Daemon arrives at the King's Landing docks, followed by Sir Eric entering Dragonstone's front door in the second episode, and now Rhaenyra dons a silent sister's robe and arrives at King's Landing once more. If that's the case, then why not just continue infiltrating and eliminating targets until the war comes to an end? Furthermore, there's also the moment where Kristen Cole and Gwen outride a dragon, and somehow Bela doesn't blast the woods they went into with fire. It's just small things like this that bugged me, and I think they could have been ironed out with a few changes. However, coming to the positive, these issues didn't take away from how the extended scenes around these moments continued to build the tension of the arising war, and they still focused on great character moments reminiscent of the parent show. For instance, while I didn't like the idea of Rhaenyra being the third person to infiltrate somewhere that should be more secure in just a few weeks, the travel that Rhaenyra makes leads to an important conversation with Alison. It reminded me of when Tyrion made the trip to communicate with Jamie. Lannister, and it echoed a similar vibe of there being no hope to stop what's coming. The final conversation between Alicent and Rhaenyra may raise some logistical concerns such as fast travel, but it remains thematically fitting. It's a poignant moment for the two women, deepening their connection in the show. Exploring the tragedy of their friendship and the Seven Kingdoms as a whole has added depth to the prequel's narrative on the small screen. The conclusion of their talk leaves a feeling of hopelessness, especially when when contrasted with the opening scene involving the Blackwoods and the Brackens. And therefore, the payoff that we hope to get in episode 4 will be worth the long wait. But that was my breakdown and analysis for House of the Dragon Season 2, Episode 3. I do hope this breakdown helped some of you guys understand the events and smaller details a bit better, and overall, I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on the episode, so don't forget to let me know down below in the comment section. I will be covering every new episode of House of the Dragon Season 2, so keep a lookout for whenever I post and make sure you don't miss any of it. For more videos on House of the Dragon and the Game of Thrones spin-off shows, then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like rating and follow me on social media via the links in the description. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've been Cortex, and as always, make some noise.